So we're in the middle of summer currently and we're just about to get into fall where people are going back to school, going to college, maybe the first year of college or another year of college. Maybe you're starting a new job, this, that, or the other. Different situations arise. So now you might be moving on to college or that new workplace, but what's going to happen to your scaly friend right here? Let's talk about that and brainstorm some ideas. Stick around. My name is Nick Pulaski. Growing up, I have always had a passion for wildlife. And with that passion, along with my passion of filmmaking, I get taken on some amazing adventures creating wildlife content. Getting up close with a variety of incredible animals. So come follow along as I pursue my goals of educating, inspiring, exploring, and conserving wildlife, all while having fun, seeing the beauty in our natural world. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me here today. So today's topic just kind of came on the fly here, and I was just kind of thinking because a lot of people constantly have this question, Maybe this isn't even something that necessarily is happening to you this coming fall. Maybe it's happening next year. Maybe it's happening in two years, three years, four years, you know, down the line. Maybe you're about to get your first reptile this year. I know a lot of people are going to reptile shows right now and seeing what new, cool, amazing animals are out there right now. Or you're going out to the pet store or this, that, or the other, and you're seeing all these amazing animals and you're about to pick up your first pet. Or maybe you currently own reptiles and you're trying to decide and figure out what you're going to do in these types of situations. Maybe you have to go to school and you have to go to a dorm room. Maybe you have to go find an apartment. Maybe you have to move somewhere completely different and relocate for a job or this, that, or the other. You know, situations arise. And what do you do with your friends right here? So in today's video, we're going to be discussing just that. To be honest, it's all very case by case scenarios. It's not a black and white situation at the end of the day. It's definitely something though to consider and keep in the back of your mind as you're working with these animals is if a situation arose where you had to move or you weren't necessarily able to take these animals, what is the next best situation that you can do? Or even if you were in the military, there's so many different scenarios out there that can arise and you won't necessarily be able to take your friend with you on all these scenarios. So what is the best option? Truthfully, I don't know the best option. It's something that we are going to kind of brainstorm together and I'm hoping through everyone's point of views, including mine of what I've done in situations, we kind of compile and brainstorm a whole bunch of different scenarios and ideas to help each and every single person out because at the end of the day, this is not a black and white situation. Everyone's situation is going to be different. Having multiple different ideas and talking about everyone's different situation will help one another at the end of the day. Now in this video, I don't necessarily condone hiding your animals behind your landlord's back. That's kind of tricky. That can get you into some murky situations as well. But there are other situations too. I kind of see it on both sides of the playing field where these guys don't make noise. As long as you are responsible and you're not overloading and like having a collection like this, I think that is okay. If you have one or two reptiles in a situation, depending on what they are, I should say too, that is a lot better to handle and maneuver and even have a conversation potentially with your landlord versus having an entire thing like I do currently, a reptile room that you would have to explain to a landlord. I think that's when it gets kind of tricky. And again, it's all case by case. You may have a really solid landlord that you can talk to and do these types of things with and kind of have that open conversation and confidence with them that you are making sure that everything is going to stay where it needs to stay and not go missing. Obviously mistakes happen and things can happen and you have to be aware of that and be planning for those types of things so nothing can go haywire and arise the best you can possibly do in those situations. But the reason I see it as something like that as well is there are so many people, if you think about it with dogs and cats, more specifically cats, people will bring in their cats to different places secretly without letting the landlord know. Now I know cats carry a lot of dandruff, there's the litter issue, there's so many different things with that which can cause a lot more problems, but people do get away with it, you know? And this is a lot less of a risk in terms of something ruining carpeting or anything like that. 
versus those kind of situations. And that's kind of how I see it as like a double sided issue. You know, I mean, I could see both sides of the playing field respectfully and you definitely want to respect those different things for your sake, for the landlord's sake and those types of things if you have to move into a situation like that. It's definitely something for sure. I have been lucky in the past that when we had to personally move, uh, we knew our landlord personally. So it was someone that was doing flips themselves. We talked to them right up front. They showed them what we had and said, look, this is something that obviously we never want to get rid of. And this is not something that we ever want to go missing or anything like that. And it's well taken care of. and It's not going to cause problems. So he kind of saw it as a really interesting thing and he was supportive of it, but still weary on it at this end of the day. But I mean, he was still open to it, open dialogue always about it. He could always come in and come see it if he ever needed to. But a lot of people are not so lucky in those situations and I get it. So again, I think as a last resort kind of option, that may be something that's kind of an open door thing for you, just kind of seeing in that kind of perspective. But I also want to hear your thoughts as well too, because at the end of the day, we want to be responsible keepers. We don't want to shine these animals more into a negative light than they already are. So you want to be a good representation of a responsible keeper at the end of the day. Situations do come up. We can be responsible pet owners, I should say. You just have to see what kind of situation you're personally in, see what your local laws are, just making sure that everything is up to par with those things as well too, reading the regulations in terms of your leasing agreements as well too, and seeing what can be potentially done about it as well too, and kind of getting some insight potentially as well always a good thing at the end of the day. I have seen a lot of places, ironically enough, living near a city where a lot of places are more open to having pet ownership. And I think that's really good. I know in the past it's been kind of tricky. And I think it just kind of depends on your place of living as well too. There's some places that still need to come around in locations, I'm sure. But I mean, it's definitely seeming like something that's a little bit more open-ended to a degree. So as long as you're just being a responsible keeper with certain things, I mean, I don't see it being too big of an issue. But again, just looking into those different things, depending on your situation, I want to hear from you guys as well too. What do you guys personally do in those situations? as well it would help out other people as well too so let us know down in the comments below also too you could be getting into reptiles you could be at a young age you could be still in like middle school high school even maybe even younger maybe a little bit older it doesn't matter and you might be going back to school you might be going off site you know you could be going anywhere and what do you do with your animals if you are keeping your home and you have someone there that's responsible enough that you personally trust to take care of these animals and they are open to taking care of your animals as well too. Don't just expect them to take over your animals, but if they are open to working with and tending to your animals while you're away, as long as you have that open conversation ahead of time and don't just throw this on them at the last minute, that might be a good option and solution. And that's a lucky option and solution as well. So that is always a great situation is having that open dialogue with whoever is in your household if you're not completely moving out and if you're just personally moving out for a bit of time that could be a temporary solution at the end of the day maybe even a long-term solution depending on how far and how lengthy amount of time it can be for you to be going away but again it's one of those conversations too like if you're younger and you're going to college so you may be potentially going into a dorm or apartment kind of like what we talked about before what do you do with your animals so kind of going back off these points if it really comes down to it it's about finding a responsible home to rehome your animal if it really truly does come down to it. You want to make sure that you're not just throwing this animal off to any sort of person. You want to make sure that the animal that you've been caring for is going to a good proper home. There's a tremendous amount of resources out there to help rehome your animals and a whole bunch of different rescues out there as well too. If you even just go to your local reptile show, there is going to be resources there that can point you in the right direction. Sometimes they even have local rescues there that can offer assistance. Maybe not even in your situation they can take the animal but they can direct you in the right location as well too to help you find a home for your animal something that is permanent as a rehome situation maybe even something that's a temporary rehoming situation and more so a fostering situation as well too I have seen it all guys there has been so many different situations out there where people are grateful that someone can foster their animal while they're away and then take on their animal again once they get back I've seen that happen I've seen it go the other way too where people have tried fostering and they weren't able to end up 
taking back their animal, unfortunately, so they had to move on from it and surrender it. So I have seen it both sides of the cards in that deal as well. It's tricky because we love these animals dearly, you know, and it's not an easy thing. Like I said, when I went to school and I was in a different living situation, I didn't want to breed or go full scale with a lot of different projects because I knew I didn't want to take on a whole bunch of animals at the time while I was one in school and two in my living situation as well too. It was not applicable for me to have a ton, a ton of animals. Now I did have a good amount of animals at the time, but nowhere to the size and the degree that I do currently. So you want to make sure that you're not biting off more than you can chew and being a responsible keeper at the end of the day, I cannot emphasize that enough, is a very crucial thing. So you want to make sure you're doing that responsibly so you're not putting reptile keepers in a negative light. You know, there's so many different negative stories out there already. We don't want to add fuel to the fire at the end of the day. I get it. Situations pop up and things do happen. You just want to see what's out there, weigh your options, and see what's going to work best for you. And again, you might be thinking it's really cool to get a leopard gecko or a ball python right now, which it definitely could be at a young age for sure. But you want to make sure that you're having that open conversation and support from maybe a parent or a brother or a sister in the family or someone that you can go to and make sure that these animals are taken care of if you plan on traveling out of state or moving away for college or school or whatever the case may be that you want to make sure that these animals are going to be taken care of for the long run you know you always want to have a long-term plan now obviously plans change things do happen and things come up and our situations always do change things just unfortunately do come up or it could be a good thing that things come up as well too you just want to make sure that you have a solid plan to make sure that your animals are well taken care of like I said before in a past video when I got in my car accident a couple months ago, I have to make sure that I have a plan ready if something were to happen to me that these animals are taken care of. Because at the end of the day, these animals rely on me. Your animals rely on you. So you want to make sure that these animals are properly taken care of no matter where they go for the extent of their life. So yeah, a quick topic today. Kind of wanted to just plant this idea in your mind. Just so you guys can give and share your ideas in your mind of what you guys have going on. Maybe you are someone that's about to go into college I want to hear what you guys are thinking what your thought process is if you have a plan if you don't have a plan that's okay too but definitely leave your thoughts and opinions down below it will help so many people out if you don't have a plan leave a comment as well too maybe someone can reach out and reply to you in the comments as well too and kind of give you their take on your situation as well again we all just want to help each other out at the end of the day that's what I strive for in this community and on my page as well so we are all here to help each other out so don't judge anyone on their situation. Help someone with their situation the best we possibly can. That's all we can do. So leave those comments down below. Let's help each other out here and brainstorm some ideas of what you guys can do in depending on your situation. Because at the end of the day, there's no right or wrong answer. It all depends on everyone's different situations. So definitely leave your comments down below. Otherwise, guys, thanks so much for joining me here today. Truly means the world to me. If you guys could do me a few favors, like this video, subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it as well as hit that notification bell so you know when I upload definitely check us out on our social media as well too we'll be posting updates of the exciting projects that we're working with here as well too so definitely check us out there as always guys i appreciate you i appreciate this community so let's all join together and help each other out thanks so much again for tuning in today and until next time we will see you guys soon take care